welcome to my crib, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm done. <laughs> Today we are going to be doing a setup video. I've been waiting forever to film this. Obviously you guys see the setup behind me and all of my videos, all my plushies and decorations, but I never have shown you in front of me or uh, how my camera and my microphone are linked up together, my lighting situation. It's gonna be a very educational video, so definitely stay tuned if you're trying to learn. Anything that I mention in this video will be down in the description box below. I'm actually in Amazon's affiliate program now, so any of the links below, if you buy something through that link, it will help out the channel. So if you want to help out the channel and you already plan on getting some of those products, that would be super cool, woohoo! Also, after I drop some knowledge on you guys, we're gonna do a podcast-esque section at the end, and that is going to be all of your guys' questions that you had for me for starting a Pokemon content creation page or channel, uh, tips for making YouTube, some things I've done, all of that. So we're gonna go into some details there. So let's do it, my goobs. Let's get into this. Take out your notepads to take some notes. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, let's get into this. Mwah! So we're gonna start with one of the most important things, in my opinion, when you're trying to create content on YouTube, which is your audio. Ooh, so pretty, so cute. Wow, I just muted it. Okay, so step one, don't do that. Uh <laughs> So this microphone is the Elgato Wave 3. It's very popular among streamers and YouTubers because it comes with a mixer software, which is really good for live streaming because it helps you separate channels of audio, but you don't really necessarily need that for filming videos. Um, so if you're just looking to get into YouTube, you do not need a super expensive microphone. You can get a good quality microphone uh, for a lot cheaper than something like this. I worked with Fifine for several years. The last three of my microphones were from them and they have super good good quality microphones for a lot cheaper than uh, something like this. What's cool about this microphone is you just tap the bottom and it mutes the microphone. So I always do that when I'm like getting off stream or I'm done recording. Uh, you can also turn the dial and it adjusts the gain straight from the microphone as well. So you don't have to use it through the program. So that's pretty awesome. I would also recommend that you get a mic stand because you want your microphone as close as possible to you and as directly in front of you because you don't want to be like speaking off to the side this is as far as my microphone now will go because of my monitor setup, but you can tell like as I get closer to the microphone that the audio quality does change. It sounds a lot better when you're closer to it. It's clearer. There's less background noise. So you always want to be as close as possible to the microphone as you can be. And a microphone stand really helps with that. This is a super expensive one that actually comes with like a little line to hide all the wires, which is very nice. Uh, but you don't need a very expensive mic stand. You just have to find one that's compatible with your microphone. And I found one for my last mic that was like $15 or something. You just slap it onto your desk and bada bing, bada boom. For post-processing audio, I only do a couple of things. I'm not super experienced or well-versed with audio post-production as much as I am with video, but I have researched a couple things and found some stuff that I like. So I'll show you guys a couple of effects that I use on my audio that'll hopefully help you with your post-production audio as well. Okay, so this is my Premiere Pro layout. I did a little audio test, as you guys can hear. Testing my audio, testing, testing my audio. So there's a couple of things I'd probably change in this clip, which is removing some of the background noise of my air conditioner and maybe clearing it up a little bit. So how I would go about doing that, um, by the way, this is a custom layout that I made. That's why my bar over here, I have air conditioning. My audio bar is over here because I like to see it big on my screen to make sure there's no clipping happening or anything like that. So as you can see in this clip, testing, testing my audio, I have air conditioning. We're going to like around 15 which usually I like to go a little bit higher than that with my audio. Uh, I'm pretty far away from the mic, which is why it's a little bit lower than normal. So how I would go about editing this audio is go to Audio Track Mixer, which I have right up here. If you don't have it, just go to Window. You can find it here and add it to your layout. So just click on Audio Track Mixer. Um, this arrow will actually not be here. It'll look like this and you wanna just click this arrow right here. And what these are, are all of your audio input bars down here. So as you can see, there's several different audio channels, A1, A2, A3, so that is representative up here. A1, A2, A3, and then the master channel right here. So if you wanted to edit all of your 
audio on your uh, project, go to the master channel, which edits all the audio. If you only want to edit audio one tab, which would be any clips that I put in this row right here, you would just edit inside of audio one. So what I do for all my videos is I click this little effect selection. I go to hard limiter and I add a hard limiter of negative three decibels. So what that is going to do is balance all of your audio so it's not ever going over negative three decibels. What that is good for is people who use headphones or listen from speakers. There's no audio that's going to be much higher than other audios. It just balances all of your peaks out in all of your audio. So now we can listen to it back and it should raise the vocals of this Testing clip. my audio, testing, testing my audio. I have air conditioning on in my room. So now you can see it's going over audio. I have air conditioning. 15 more into uh, like the nine, six ish area, but it will never go past um, negative three, which is what you want because you don't want to blow people's eardrums out. So that is something I always add to my videos. You can add it to the master layer too if you want. A couple other things that you can do is go into multiband compressor. That is something that has a lot of cool presets that you can add. Um, you can do hiss reduction. This one's kind of interesting. Hang on in my room. Oh god, it's so loud. <laughs> Kill the harshness. Room. Yay! So there's a lot of just different pop master or, oh, what's the one that raise vocals? This one makes your vocals super loud. Testing, testing my audio. So yeah, you can use pretty much walkie talkie. I have air conditioning on in my room. There's a lot of different um, presets that they have that you can add. So depending on what your audio is sounding like or looking like, you can kind of mess and you can edit all these presets as well. Uh, a lot of things you can do too is balance out your levels here in multiband compressor. Testing so it shows audio. you all of your levels have right here and you can actually isolate them as well. If I want to only hear like the midpoints of my audio, just click S right here. Air conditioning on in my room. If I want to hear the high points, click there. So it actually lets you isolate portions of your audio. So if your lows are really, really low or they're quiet or something, you can adjust it over here or the highs or the mid ranges. So that's pretty awesome as well. And then one other thing that I use pretty frequently is the noise reduction denoise. So that'll get rid of that air conditioner in the background. Testing my audio, testing, testing my audio. I have air conditioning on in my room. So what I like to do for this, I don't like how it sounds most of the time for the denoise. So I go to light noise reduction and then I even lower that even more. So it does get rid of a lot of your noise reduction still, but it's not gonna be as intense. Like this is max noise reduction. Testing my audio, testing, testing my- It sounds weird to me, like I don't like it. So usually I go to like six or 8%. Testing my audio, testing, testing my audio. You can make it higher. I have air conditioning on in my room. But this is without, this is with. Testing, testing my without. audio. I have air conditioning on in my room. So you can hear a major difference. It just completely eliminates the air conditioning in the background. So I would just do light noise reduction if you have noises in the background. My PC makes a lot of noise sometimes. So that's what I do with post-production audio. Hopefully that helps you guys a little bit. Yay! Now for some of my equipment. This is my Canon G7X. This was the camera that I had for filming before I had Tony the Sony, my DSLR. This camera is awesome, especially if you're bringing it with you on trips or vlogging. It has a really good like flip around um, screen to look at yourself, which is very nice. Uh, overall, it's like one of the most high quality point and shoot cameras. I love him so much. The only Canon camera I own, otherwise it's Sony all the way. But yeah, it's pretty cute. Then we have Mr. GoPro. This is the GoPro 9. Taco literally just upgraded it. It was the GoPro 7. Now it's the GoPro 9, so I haven't even filmed with it yet. This is my hand cam for my videos, and it is attached to a monitor mount, actually. It's like a really heavy duty mount that you attach to your desk, and then an arm extends out, and you're supposed to attach a monitor to it, but instead I attached the GoPro mount and then strapped the GoPro to it. So that's a really good way to just have a nice aerial view hand cam. This is my stream deck. I have a bunch of shortcuts linked to it so it opens up folders that I need that have a bunch of files that I save that I often use in editing or it launches a program that I need. Each symbol is a symbol that I recognize for uh, what I know is in the folder that it opens. So if you guys are confused like what the heck is that? That's that's what it is. <laughs> this is my Joby. <laughs> 
<laughs> I use him uh, whenever I'm filming my card close-up videos with my camera. I use him when I'm out and about filming vlogs or anything like that. He's really cool because he's flexible and he can wrap around like poles or other things that are small enough for him to fit around, which is pretty sweet. This is my new PC that was entirely crowdfunded for by viewers of this channel and Taco as well. Taco has helped me so much. He's pretty much made my entire setup possible. Um, so when my old PC blew up, when I was actually trying to render some 4K video, I was kind of out of luck. We made the goal for this PC in like less than five hours, which is absolutely insane. So thank you again to everyone who was so generous and helped me get this PC that can handle all the editing and rendering that I do. I appreciate it so much. I love you guys. This is my chair that Taco surprised me with recently. I guess he had like pre-ordered it a long time ago and it just showed up at my door one day. Um, it's actually insanely comfortable for a gaming chair and it helps you with your posture and everything too. I did have a DX racer and that thing was like really old and really not all it's hyped up to be honestly. I would definitely recommend Secret Lab chairs, they're bomb. This is my wide angle lens that I use for my main camera shot, it's super wide angle it captures the entire room which I personally enjoy that look a lot of people don't a lot of people do but I dig it a bunch and yeah it just looks it looks so beautiful I love I love wide angle lenses <laughs> so this is the camera stand that I use to mount my DSLR to um, you use this little hook on ball attachment and then a plug-in battery as well so this is Tony the Sony he currently has my kit lens on him so you'll have to unscrew that lens to attach the wide angle lens that I use for filming. So I'm just putting that on, you just line up the two little dots in order to attach a new lens. And then once that is clicked in, you'll have to attach the attachment that you need for mounting to the actual stand. And then once we have that attached, we'll be taking out the regular camera battery and replacing it with the charger camera battery. You're pretty much just tricking the camera into thinking it has a regular battery in it, but really it has a battery that's plugged in so it never runs out of juice. So once you have that battery plugged in, then you just need to attach the camera to the actual joint on the stand. After that, I will plug it in. It's actually plugged in to a 4K cam link that's plugged into my computer uh, that ensures that you can record uh, fully in 4K. The GoPro that I have is actually connected to my internal capture card that also can output 4K. So everything that I film is fully 4K. Then we just take off the lens cap. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about my lighting setup. I have tons of lights in this room. All of these lights are Philips Hue lights or Elgato key lights. The Philips Hue lights are all linked to an app that I have, so I can turn them off and on with just a click of a button on my phone, and you can change all the colors of them as well. The ones that are hooked to the back of my monitor actually sync to my monitor, so they change colors for whatever is on the monitor screen or if you're playing music they can change colors to the music it's actually super super cool and really you don't need all of this fancy lighting you can get cheap led panels off amazon instead of key lights uh, you don't need the Philips Hue lights, that's just personal preference if you want them. Uh, this is just a setup I've acquired over a long period of time. Let me go into my phone because that's how I control all of my lights behind me and turn off all of my background lights and then I'm going to turn off all my studio lights. So this is what the room looks like with zero lights on, just the window in the background. So now I will turn on my studio lights. So this is what it looks like with all my studio lights on. And then I also have my main lights. This is my side light. What putting a light behind you is gonna do is separate you more from the background image that you have. So as you can see, it kind of highlights my hair and separates me a little bit more from the background. So that's what it looks like with that. This is my side light over here. So this is what it looks like with just one light to the side. And then this is my overhead light and my light to the right. So these are all my lights pieced together and how I light my setup 
all together, so. Whoa! I forgot to mention the Pokemon light is linked to a Philips Hue cube. I forgot what the actual name is, but it plugs into the outlet and then the light plugs into that. So it's not the light itself that lets you switch off from the app, it's the cube. With the Elgato Studio lights, another cool thing you can do is change the lumens of the light. So I can make my lighting more orange. This is my background light orange or blue. I usually keep it somewhere in like the middle around like 4200 uh, or you know you can change one of these lights if you want more of a artistic type look. Also this these lights are only at like 25% like a more natural lighting situation uh, especially because it's like blinding so <laughs> Yeah, but you can you can strengthen the lights a lot more than this as well if you really wanted to. So it's really important to have a lot of light wherever your cards are going to be because you want to light up the card so that the camera will pick it up and you can see it a lot better. That is my uh, my lighting situation, all my lights in my room. So my microphone, my lights, and my stream deck are all Elgato, which is what these symbols are down here. So this is my stream deck. That's how I edit my stream deck. Uh, this is my microphone. So this is how I adjust all my audio levels for my microphone. And then this is my lighting. As you can see down here, this is how I adjust all of my lighting. So these are my three Elgato key lights that I have. Uh, and you can toggle them on and off or change, like I said, the color temperature or the brightness of them. Okay, so now I'm in OBS, which stands for Open Broadcast Software. This is a free to use software. I'm very familiar with it because I full-time streamed for two years on Twitch. And this is what will link together all of your audio, camera, layouts that you can create for your stream. Uh, so this is where I have all of that. As you can see, I have a starting soon screen. I have my main camera screen. I have my card camera screen. Um, I have this one <laughs> and a screen record, which is what we're in right now. So that is what I do everything in. So down here you set up different scenes and then inside of those scenes you have sources, which is what I'm doing now. I'm just picking up my display capture source. So this software is where you're gonna link all of your audio and video together. So you're recording a streamline video instead of having to chop up a bunch of audio and video files and link them all together in an editing software. This is just a streamline single video and then you edit within that video. So that is what the software is used for. I'm not gonna go into how to set everything up. There's tons of tutorials on YouTube, but that is what I use for uh, recording my videos. So this is Adobe Premiere Pro, what I edit all of my videos in. Um, there's a billion tutorials online for Adobe Premiere Pro. I've been using this program for years and years and years, so I'm very familiar with it, but still, even then, there's things I learn every single day in this program. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys kind of the basics of what I do in this program for editing my videos. So first things first, I film in 4K and I cannot edit in 4K because it's extremely taxing on your computer. So what I do for that is I go to File, Project Settings, Ingest Settings, Ingest, Create Proxies, High, or sorry, not High, Medium Resolution Proxies, which will be 1280 by 720. So all this does is when you click OK, it converts any videos that you plop over into your project into a proxy. So I'll show you guys, let me delete this. So normally what I would do is create a new bin and I would title it like video footage for whatever I record. And then I'm going to open the file where my video footage is. I have a button on my stream deck that just pops it up. I think it's this one, that's my tester video. So I'll just plop that in. And when I plop that in to the project, what's gonna happen is Media Encoder is going to open, which there it is. Okay, Media Encoder opens. Uh, and because I did that ingest, now it's ingesting the footage and creating it into a 1280 by 720 file that I can edit. So it's already done. Then I minimize that. Now this video has a proxy attached. So when I drag it down onto the timeline, this little blue button here toggles proxies on and off. So you can see right now the proxy is on, but if I toggle it off, the resolution changes and it becomes a lot more clear. So I'm just editing in a lower quality so that I can actually edit smoother. With the proxy on, you can easily scrub through this entire video and you see every single second of every frame. With the proxy off, 
So this is the full resolution. When you scrub through, it lags, it glitches. So you can't do that. So you always want to edit with proxies on if you're in 4K because otherwise you won't be able to. It'll be really laggy and glitchy and horrible. So after everything's proxied, you can just drag your clips down into your timeline, which is what I just did here. I like to edit in rainbow colors. So I start with rows right here. So I start like my entire first segment. So my intro will all be in rows. And then I switch to mango and I go in a rainbow because I just think it looks cute. Uh, <laughs> a couple of my major tools that I use is this razor tool. This is what you use to clip your videos. So as you can see, I just cut it and now it's two separate clips. So that is how I make all of my cuts in my videos. Um, you can also just control Z to back up if you don't want the cut. You can slow down your video, right click, go to speed duration. A little thing will pop up right here and you can slow it down to like 70%. This will make the video slower. Testing my audio, testing, testing my audio. So if you wanted to do some slow-mo stuff, you can add reverb. Uh, this is the effects section over here. So just search reverb. I use studio reverb usually. You just drag that onto the clip and then it opens up in the effects panel right here. This is all the effects for whatever clip you have selected. Um, go to the reverb, click edit. I go to like large reverb. Testing, testing my audio and my air conditioning. And then the reverb is on. So that's pretty cool. You can adjust your color. So like this video is really too yellow for me. So I just lower the temperature to like right there. Um, so you can tell the difference. Boom, 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 boom. So you can switch all your cut. You can get crazy with it if you wanted to. Uh, when I do my crazy like devil, devil effect, I just go to creative and then I just up both the reds and then boom, you got different colors. <laughs> So there's like a million things that you can do in Premiere Pro, but yeah, that's my main ones. Also, for people who wonder like, how do you resize your video or whatever? All you do in Premiere Pro to do that is you select the video and then you just drag it closer. So now that whole clip is resized my audio. to that. So if I wanted to like do different sizes, you could just cut it and then resize this one to zoomed in and recentered. And then it's like, boom. Testing my audio, testing, testing. Boom, it switches. So <laughs> that's normally what I do a lot. And then to make it even shorter, if you want to copy this uh, resolution or ratio, whatever you want to call it, uh, you just control C and then control alt V and that'll bring up paste attributes. And then you can select which ones you want to paste. Um, and then click OK, and then it'll copy that exact resolution. So now they're both the same, if that makes sense. So a lot of times if I just have a, a base resolution that I want to zoom in on, I'll just copy that resolution and then copy paste it, uh, paste attributes on like a bunch of different clips. So yeah, that is how I do it. Also, if you want to add text, you can do that just with the type tool. Just drag it on there and then say like, what up, broski, broski, how you doing? Um, and there you go, you have text now. You can select the text drop down and size it up if you want. Change the font, drag it out. What up, broski? Change the layout to boom, art, art, art right here. <laughs> what up, broski? <laughs> So yeah, there's a lot of things that you can do. I also have a tab where I have all my sound effects. So I just click the button on my stream deck and it pops up all my sound effects. So this is one I use a lot, the little blop. So now it's like on my air conditioning. Boom, blopped, blopped on there. Um, the way Premiere Pro works is it separates audio and video uh, bars. So if you see, there's three audio channels and three video channels. So I have my main video here, and then the text effect was added to a video two channel, and then the audio effect was added to audio two. So it's all on different channels, pretty much. So when you click play, test go, and my air conditioning, it all pops test. up at once. Or say I wanted the text 
to pop up earlier with the audio. Testing my audio. Boom. My pops up. Um, you can even clip these together. So if I wanted these to be grouped together, just click group and then you can drag them around and they'll stick together. So that's pretty cool. For any picture effects, I just bring up a tab on my stream deck. This is a bunch of pictures that I often use in my videos. So like, let's say I just wanted um, to be a whale for some reason, drag that on there. Put it over my face. <laughs> and then audio and my air conditioning. I'm a whale. <laughs> <laughs> I am a whale. Uh, so you just drag them on yeah, to the timeline and they pop up. And then I could just copy, I can ungroup this, grab uh, the sound effect, copy paste it. Oop, copy paste it onto audio too. My audio and yeah, my air conditioning. <laughs> um, another thing that I do, if I'm like moving around, I'm not really moving in this video, but if I'm moving around or I want the whale to move around, all you do is use these little keyframes up here. So let's say I want the whale to just be like bouncing around. So this is the start of the keyframe um, where he's at now. So I'll say, okay, I want him to start here. So I'm gonna toggle all these positions where he's at. Then let's say I want him to, by this point, be somewhere else. So let's say I want him to spin around a bunch of times and then fly over off the screen. I just dragged him. You can kind of see it with these dots. I just dragged him away. So now you'll see what it ha what it does. Yeah, my air conditioning. Woo! Test. The whales flying around, bro. Oh my god. Yo, yeah, my oh air my god. <laughs> so that is how I move stuff around. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, you can add a hat if you want a hat. No, I have a hat. Boom. Testing my audio. <laughs> so that's what that's what I edit in. That's what I add all my stuff. This takes hours, um, by the way. This is what I do for like 20 billion hours a day when I'm editing my videos. So every little edit takes takes a long time, but that is how I add all my stuff to my videos. So hopefully that was helpful. Okay, bye bye. All right, my goobs. Now we're gonna get into the podcast esque part of this video, I'm going to answer all of your questions that you asked me about content creating or setting up a YouTube channel. So let's just get straight into this. Let me drink some coffee. Should I add effects and prices in description and video of cards? I actually used to do this when I first started YouTube. I stopped because I personally don't like it anymore because the prices of Pokemon cards fluctuate constantly, all the time. They're going up, they're going down. Sets are rotating out of standard. Sets are extremely inflated when uh, they first drop. There's so many factors that go into pricing Pokemon cards. You could have a card that's really expensive when you pull that card, but then the next set drops and then it drops in price because people aren't playing it anymore. It gets countered in the standard format. There's so many reasons why a price of a card will change. And the thing about YouTube is that people are always watching your videos. Like it's a passive thing where someone could find your channel today and start watching videos from a year ago, you know? And if they see a price of a card on the screen and they're like, wow, it's that much. And then they go and look and it's like, what? This card's only like a dollar. What do you mean? It, it kind of is confusing. So I personally don't like to do that anymore. But uh, again, it's personal preference. So whatever you want to do, but that's why I stopped doing it. Is it even worth starting a pokey channel? <laughs> that's so depressing. <laughs> is it even worth it? <laughs> I'm gonna say yes to this because I genuinely love creating content and I think that your content should stem from what you're passionate about, so absolutely. But the caveat to that, I will say it's gonna be a lot harder trying to start a YouTube channel for Pokemon now than it was like a year ago because the popularity of Pokemon is going up because of a lot of larger content creators are giving it more attention. So the more people that join the hobby, the better it is all around for the hobby. But at the same time, that means that Pokemon is becoming very oversaturated. There's people that are starting channels every other day for Pokemon. Uh, so it's gonna be a lot harder to attract an audience to something because you're just a small fish in a big sea, if you know what I mean. But really, as I said, your content should stem from your passion and your love for the hobby, not because you want to be like rich and famous on YouTube. That's just, that's lame, honestly. <laughs> that's super lame. So yeah, don't, don't do that. Don't be one of those people. And yeah, 
<laughs> Definitely what you said in your videos. I'm scrapping it with iMovie. Dude, that's what's up. I never use iMovie because uh, I'm not a filthy Mac user. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I joke. I kid. I kid. Um, but I did use Windows Movie Maker uh, in the good old days. And I would also use a pinnacle to transfer my tapes over. Uh, if you think proxying 4K videos is bad, bruh, imagine having to transfer a tape recording into a file. <laughs> that was, that was bad. Anyway, if I haven't already explained this in this video, I subscribe to the Adobe Creative Cloud, which is a monthly program that allows you access to all of the Adobe programs. I use like five different programs on a daily basis. So that was the best thing for me. Premiere Pro, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Media Encoder, Adobe Acrobat, Adobe After Effects, Adobe Lightroom that I edit photos in because I also do photography, but that has nothing to do with video recording. So yeah, I use a ton of their programs, so I just pay for the entire package monthly, but you can get a single program if you want. It's also a lot cheaper if you're a student. So if you're a student, you can get a lot of money off as well, which is pretty cool. Do you buy your sealed boxes from a distributor? No, I get all of my sealed product from flipsidegaming.com, one of my sponsors on the channel, and they get all their products through a distributor. So kind of, I guess, in a secondary way, I get through a distributor, um, but technically everyone gets it through a distributor. Uh, but yeah, no, I'll let you guys know if I ever get my own distributor. That'd be sick, actually. <laughs> but no, not right now. Oh, so here's two. How do you get discovered and what do you think is the best way to reach people when starting? These two kind of go together, I guess. So what I always go by and what I tell other people as well is that you have to set yourself apart from other creators. There's like a billion channels out there that just open TCG product. That unfortunately is not gonna get you very far because uh, you can find those anywhere. It's like a dime a dozen, one of those channels. So what you can do to set yourself apart is focus on two major things. One is the quality of your video. So like the quality of your equipment, your microphone, your lighting, your camera, or if you don't have a ton of money to invest into that, it's gonna be your personality, who you are in front of the camera. Why would people wanna sit and watch you rather than sit and watch another channel? So being your Self, being a unique content creator, not being driven by money. That's a really big one. Uh, <laughs> there's so many channels out there, especially some of the big channels. I know I'm gonna get roasted for this, but when there's a channel that like every other video is like, I opened this $500,000 box, or I spent $1 billion on this Pokemon card, or I just found this base set $50,000 box. I actually tripped over it while walking off of my yacht, you know? <laughs> I hate those videos so much because it's just like, cool bro, you got money, sick, you know? And I mean, some people are attracted to that. Some people like seeing those openings, but like that's one of those situations where the person doesn't have a lot else to offer, in my opinion. Like if they have to dump a bunch of money on you to for you to watch their video, instead of like bringing value to you in other ways. It's just something I don't vibe with, honestly. Um, so I would say, you know, bring value to your viewer value that sets you apart from other channels. I think a huge misconception uh, due to a lot of these big channels is that you need a ton of money to make Pokemon videos and that's just not the case at all. I think it's way more important to have quality content um, personality wise, you're qu more quality than someone else who just kind of like sits there and opens packs, if that makes sense. You know, people are watching your content for you. The difference between you opening cards and a billion other channels opening cards is you. <laughs> You are the most important part of your videos, despite what your setup is, despite how potato your microphone is, even though I recommend not having a potato mic, but still, <laughs> despite all of that, if you are entertaining enough and you are interesting enough as a person, people will watch your videos over another video. That's just facts. That's just facts. I also just think investing into being more knowledgeable is a big thing because then you can provide more value to your viewers, whether that's like researching the cards, uh, learning how to edit your videos better, learning what programs that you can use to help you out or things that will help you cut time to produce more videos, just investing yourself into your content wholeheartedly. And people will see that, man. People will see the hard work you put into your videos if you're putting hard work into your videos. They will. I feel like I've been talking about these two forever, so we're just gonna move on. I don't, I don't even know if I answered the question. <laughs> Honestly, how to balance the hustle attitude and being conscious of mental fatigue. Yo, this is a good one. Um, so a lot of people don't know this, but I sometimes wake up 
and the whole day I'm just not in the mood to film. Like my brain is just foggy for some reason. I can't get my wording right. I get frustrated easily. I'm just not in a filming mood like whatsoever. It happens a lot actually. Or there's other times where I'll sit down and have to edit a video and I'm like, bro, I can't sit in this chair for longer than like two minutes for some reason. Like you naturally as a human being, are gonna go through different emotions, different mental states, uh, different fatigue, like body fatigue. You're not just a robot that's like, beep boop bop, I'm going to edit this video now, you know? <laughs> so my biggest thing with this is that do not force yourself to film when you're not in a mood to film because I've done that before and it's absolutely horrible and I end up scrapping the videos that I do like that half the time because it's frustrating, you get mad at yourself um, when you're not getting things right or you're not doing it right or you're, you know, you have technical difficulties or something like that. It's really frustrating for you and it'll mentally exhaust you. It'll make you feel like you're failing as a person. Um, whereas like, let's say you wait a day to film that video and suddenly you're like, dude, I'm super hyped. You know, I took a rest day. I recharged my batteries. I drank some coffee, you know, whatever you have to do to get yourself into a better mood. Um, if you wait until you're ready to film and then you film the video, suddenly it's like everything's going super smooth. You know, your words are just flowing right. It takes you way less time to film the video that you're trying to film. It's just way better for you, your mental state, and it's easier to edit those videos. So my best advice is to set goals for yourself. So say you wanna do like two videos a week. So plan out the videos, plan out the time you wanna do them, but don't force yourself if you're not in a, a good space to film that video or edit that video, because it's gonna take you way longer. It's gonna be horrible, whereas if you just you know do something else instead if you don't feel like filming edit a video instead or work on you know promoting your social media platforms or do something else rather than filming a video that you're just not down to film some days i'll wake up and be like bro i don't feel like getting ready and filming a video today but i'll just chill in my pajamas and edit like two videos and drink a bunch of hot chocolate all day <laughs> like that happens to me a lot too so just make sure you're not pushing yourself and you're wearing yourself out mentally and physically because it can take a huge toll on you as a person so don't do that you know it's always good to make your goals but if you can't make those goals don't be super hard on yourself because it's just gonna be bad for like everyone in the situation my daughter loves pokemon cards how do we get started with making vids um that's super cute that your daughter loves Pokemon cards. I, I used to teach kids how to play Pokemon before COVID was a thing. So I love kids getting into Pokemon. Um, I personally though, I know I'm probably gonna get roasted for this, but I personally don't believe in putting kids onto social media, including YouTube or social media platforms like Instagram, Twitter, whatever. I don't know why I could be on Twitter, but any of those platforms. The internet's a really toxic place. Like it's, it's not even good for a lot of adults to be on social media, honestly, <laughs> especially for long periods of time or whatever. There's also a lot of creepos out there that like full blown search for channels with children on them because they're creepos. So I just don't think it's the best situation to put your kid in. I think it's awesome if your kids like Pokemon, definitely buy packs for them, open packs for them, play games with them, do all of that. But you don't have to do that like on a camera to get famous on YouTube, if that makes sense. I don't know, there's just some part of me that feels like a kid should not be on YouTube until they're at least like 16, 17 and can make their own videos and do what they want to do uh, and make their own decisions and stuff. I just don't like, I, I just don't like seeing channels that have little kids on them. I don't know. It just bothers me a lot. No offense to people that have those types of channels with their kids. You know, you do you, boo boo. But I personally, it's just a personal thing with me. I don't, I don't like it. I feel like it's too easy for kids to be exploited online so yeah that's my personal opinion but if you want to make a channel as an adult and then bring your kid on when they're you know old enough to to make their own videos or whatever that'd be super chill i'm, I'm down for that for sure <laughs> how much seo game do you play versus going with your feelings on thumbnails and tags um very little i think i feel like if i did more seo stuff i would probably grow my channel more than I do now, but I am also not one of those people that's like, I'm gonna do my video in all caps for my title because 
it gets more attention. So I kind of balance it out. Like if you didn't know, having Pokemon in the title, having opening in the title, having whatever the set name is in the title, like those things help your title go further in the YouTube algorithm. Um, having the correct tags, that helps a lot. There's programs you can use to like see which tags are trending and all of that. I don't use those because they're just too daunting. Uh, for me, I tried to and I was like, I can't do this. Like I, there's so much work I have to do already. Like I can't do this. But if I had some sort of like marketing manager or something like that, I would definitely be like, yo, what, what tag should I put in this and have them research that. If you can invest the time and be knowledgeable about it, obviously it's gonna help your videos. Uh, just don't just don't be one of those people that does super cringy thumbnails or like uh, all caps titles because that's like the thing to do because that's just lame <laughs> in my opinion it's lame man it's lame i'm okay taking a couple hits to my wallet to sustain my integrity and not do all caps titles <laughs> facts <laughs> what is the best schedule to keep with uploads um i would say at least one video a week Obviously this depends on what your schedule is, if you work full time, if you have kids, if you have a job, if you have other priorities in your life. If you're super busy, I think one video a week is a pretty achievable goal. You just have to, you know, plan out your times when you're going to film and edit. If you have a lot of open time and you're trying to really invest into your YouTube channel, I would say two to three videos a week. Um, I saw a major difference in my own channel. I used to post like every week and a half, I'd post one video. Then when I started to post like two videos instead of one, bro, it makes a huge, huge difference. Huge difference. People just want to see content in general. Like a lot of times, People don't even really care what the content is. It could be TCG, it could be opening packs, it could be just talking about stuff. They just want content, more content. So the biggest thing would be, yes, upload as much as you possibly can without burning yourself out, wrecking your body and your mind and sacrificing your quality. That's a big thing. Just doing low effort content to pump out more content it doesn't really help you. If you pump out less videos a week, but they're higher quality videos, people are more likely to stick around and watch your videos because they're higher quality videos, they like your content more. In my opinion, quality over quantity is always more important. Woo, okay, I got through a lot of those questions. There was still a lot more. A lot of them were about the setup, which I should have already answered in the educational part of this video. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you want me to do more stuff like this, I don't know, answering more questions or other things that you're still wondering, I could definitely try to work that in to more of my content. I don't know. I think it's cool sharing my opinions, discussing what you guys think about things. I like it. I dig it. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you to all my patrons that help me outside of AdSense and outside of my sponsorships. You guys are the bomb diggity junior. Also, huge shout out to Taco. He's essentially the only reason I exist on this platform to this day. He has helped me since day one, get my entire setup going. My executive producer, my number one, my OG. The person who has always believed in me. I love you so much. And until next time, my goobs, I'll catch you later. Bye -bye -bye -bye.